Hello and welcome to a special live broadcast from the USA Today Network of the implosion of the former Trump Plaza Casino in Atlantic City, New Jersey. I'm Ryan Ross. And I am Rebecca King. We are here at the Playground Pier in Atlantic City, just a couple of yards away from the demolition site. And we want to thank you for joining us across social media platforms uh, of the USA Today Network. And over the course of the next half hour or so leading up to the 9 a.m. demolition, we will look back at the history of the Trump Plaza, get a feel for the attitude around Atlantic City regarding this implosion, and also talk about what might happen to the land on which Trump Plaza currently sits upon. Yes, it is a brisk day. We are surrounded by other media representatives uh, getting ready to cover this event. And we also have our team of photographers here. So we have drone footage that's gonna be coming to you live from high above Atlantic City throughout the broadcast. And as the clock ticks closer to that 9 a.m. implosion, let's start our show with a look back at the history of the Trump Plaza Casino. Yeah, so Ryan, this opened in 1984. Um, it's a 39-floor casino. As you can see, it's that one standing behind us. It's been stripped of all of its windows, um, and it is getting ready for the implosion. Now, it was originally called Harrah's at Trump Plaza. And it was built uh, for $214 million. This was one of Trump's first AC ventures. Um, this was the 10th overall casino that opened in Atlantic City. In the 70s, the late 70s, Atlantic City kind of surged in popularity again. Obviously, it was big back in the day. And then in the 70s, it, it reached its peak again. And this was part of that. And uh, again, a part of that, a part of what makes these casinos so great is the entertainment that they bring in. So... You know, this was known for having fights with Mike Tyson and uh, act like the Rolling Stones. Yeah, that's right. And, and just a quick Atlantic City geography lesson. The Trump Plaza sits, of course, on the boardwalk immediately next door to Boardwalk Hall. That's the famous venue, the host of uh, Miss America pageant. As Rebecca said, Mike Tyson fights. If you go back and watch some of those old fights or first see Donald Trump sitting ringside. Mm -hmm. You'll see Trump Plaza advertisements plastered all over the ring and all over the arena. Uh, we're in between. Uh, Caesars and, uh, as I said, Boardwalk Hall here on the boardwalk. So this was, uh, as Rebecca said, Trump's first venture in Atlantic City, opening in 1984. And it was the Trump Arena in 1985 that would be uh, Donald Trump's next casino in the city. That's over in the Marina District, closer to what is now Harris and Borgata. That was 1985. That was sold in 2011 and is now the Golden Nugget Casino in Atlantic City. Trump Taj Mahal, that opened in 1990. That was Trump's largest casino in Atlantic City. That changed hands after a 2004 bankruptcy. It closed in 2016, and it reopened in 2018. That is now the Hard Rock Casino here in Atlantic City. Trump's World Fair also opened in 1981. That was torn down in the year 2000. Uh, a lot of this info, by the way, we're getting from our great colleague Jim Walsh at the Courier Post in Cherry Hill. Uh, he's been, of course, covering uh, this story. So for, for further detail, be sure to check out Jim's article. There. Yeah, and also in Jim's story, he talks about, you know, the the Atlantic City experienced kind of a lull. So there were obviously peaks and pits. And I think it's worth mentioning that in 2018, there was a lot of excitement when, you know, Trump Taj Mahal came, opened, opened up as Hard Rock. Um, the Farmer Revel was opened up as Ocean Casino. So there was a lot of momentum going into 2018, um, a little bit of, you know, coronavirus obviously kind of put a, a damper on that. But when we're going back to when the casinos were struggling and closing, you know, there was increased competition from out of state. We were looking at higher gas prices. So people from New York and Pennsylvania were less inclined to drive to Atlantic City. Uh, there was the smoking ban. People could no longer smoke while they were on their, you know, playing their slots. And uh, Trump casinos were hit hard with amount of debt. But, you know, that is not to say that these weren't incredibly impactful casinos at their time, specifically when it comes to employment. When we're talking about these casinos, I mean, we are getting thousands of people employed. The Taj employed uh, 2,800 people. The Plaza, which is about to uh, come down in a couple of minutes, employed 1,500 people. And uh, the Marina employed 1,200 people. And Mayor Marty Small was out here uh, just a couple moments ago talking to the media. He stopped by to say hello. Um, we actually got a clip of what the mayor had to say to some of the assembled press out here. So let's take a look at that real quick. I mean, we have a tremendous emergency management team under Fire Chief Scott Evans. Our police 
are well prepared. The city is used to dealing with big events, so um, it's pretty smooth. Everything's set to go for nine still? Yeah, well, as far as I know, everything's set to go for nine. The building's coming down today, it's safe to say. Good thing it wasn't yesterday because fog would have canceled. What does this mean for Atlantic City? So we had so we had Mayor Marty Small, as I said, out here before uh, talking about this implosion today. He said it's a great day for Atlantic City. It's a, it's a new beginning for for the property here. Uh, so what has happened since? What, what has happened since the Trump Marina closed in 2014? Why no redevelopment? We've seen redevelopment of other casinos around the city. Well, frankly, it was a safety hazard, and, and the mayor said it while he was out here. Uh, this is nothing political. This is nothing to do with the name Trump that was attached to the building. This is a safety concern uh, in the unused building, and that's why it needs to be demolished. Uh, the Atlantic City construction official, Anthony Cox, deemed it unsafe. Uh, windows are broken. There's dilapidated conditions. So as the mayor said, it, it, it's nothing political with the name Trump attached to it. It's just, frankly, a safety hazard, and this building needs to come down so that something can come in in its place. Uh, Trump Entertainment Resorts, as we said, had three properties in Atlantic City, the Marina, uh, which is now Golden Nugget, Taj Mahal, which is now the Hard Rock Casino, and of course Trump Plaza. Trump Plaza is the last place where Donald Trump's footprint can be seen in Atlantic City, and Trump, frankly, was a name that was synonymous with Atlantic City back in its heyday, operating mm -hmm. three casinos in the city, uh, his name in red lights above these tall buildings here. Uh, Trump cut ties with the casino in 2009. He received a 10% fee for the use of his name on the city's three casinos that still bore his name at the time. Uh, he had no role in Trump Entertainment uh, Resorts when they filed for bankruptcy for the final time in 2014. The building behind us that will be coming down soon, that property is now owned by billionaire Carl Icahn. Yes, and uh, you know, as we have the media coming, we're getting closer and closer to the time. Obviously, we've been talking about the history of the uh, Trump Plaza. So now we're going to throw it over to a video that our uh, the USA Today Network visual journalist Brian Johnston uh, created. So that's going to give you a closer look at Trump Plaza. Let's check that out. It was the 80s, a decade that brought us glitz, glamour, and excess. It was also a decade that Donald J. Trump became a household name. In June of 1982, the Trump Organization marked its first foray into the Atlantic City gambling scene. The new construction would contain 614 rooms, seven restaurants, a health club, a 750-seat showroom, and a 60,000-square-foot casino. And on May 14, 1984, Atlantic City's 10th casino, Harrah's at Trump Plaza, would officially open to the public. In the first years of the $220 million project, profits were lean and fueled differences between the Trump Organization and Harris. In May of 1986, Trump bought Harris out for $70 million and officially became known as Trump Plaza. In the late 80s, Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino was now off and running. He would spend large amounts of money on major events, which helped himself and other businesses throughout the city. And in 1988, only one other casino brought in more revenue than Trump Plaza. In 1990, Trump Plaza would see a sharp decline in revenue as Trump's first casino began to compete with his newest, Trump Taj Mahal. He would later add more properties, but debt restructuring and prepackaged bankruptcy only marked the beginning of troubles to come. With the success of book deals and television projects, Donald Trump declared his brand was as strong as ever in 2004. But Trump Entertainment Resorts were operating at a $125 million loss over the previous three years. One month after his comments, they would reorganize its finances under a Chapter 11 bankruptcy action. From 2007 to 2009, an economic downturn and union disputes had Trump Entertainment Resorts reporting a loss 
of $1.24 billion attributed to casino operations. When industry-wide deficits hit the casino gaming industry, Trump would officially cut ties with the casino firm shortly before the 2009 bankruptcy, but received a 10% fee from the casino still using his name. In 2014, they would enter bankruptcy for the final time, and the once prominent name that lit up the city's skyline had now gone dark, marking the last link to the Trump era in Atlantic City. Our thanks to Brian Johnston for putting that video together. We are back here live in Atlantic City, New Jersey, awaiting the 9 a.m. implosion of the former Trump Plaza Casino. Brian Ross here with Rebecca King. Thank you for watching across the USA Today Network. Uh, Rebecca, leading up to this de uh, demolition, it's been met with some fanfare, fanfare here in the city. Uh, one of the last demolitions was back in 2007, the Sands Casino. When that came down, that was more of the, the Vegas style, I guess you could say, implosion. Some fireworks that happened that night. 9 p.m. Here we are at 9 a.m., but still plenty of excitement here. Yes, I think COVID has definitely uh, uh, shaped the way that we are, you know, celebrating or observing uh, this this momentous occasion. Yeah, Carl Icahn, who owns the building, actually wanted the uh, building to be demolished in the summer. However, an auction took place. Later, that auction, you know, got the kibosh put onto it, but it, it took place. Uh, people were uh, auctioning to be the person to push the button to make the building implode. So all of the money that was raised from that was going to go to the Boys and Girls Club of Atlantic City. When Icon put a stop to that, he did agree to donate $175,000 to the Boys and Girls Club of Atlantic City, um, which is how much the auction had raised up until that point. Um, so yeah, so the, like I said, there's a lot of people here right now. There's We're, we're seeing people out on the beach looking. Um, there's obviously a lot of media here. And, uh, you know, we have, we're looking at another event. People uh, teamed up with One Atlantic and Ocean Casino Resort to auction off spots to uh, watch in Playground Pier. And that includes an overnight stay at either Hard Rock or Ocean Casino and a dinner for two. So the money for that is also going to the Boys and Girls Club. And finally, the last place that people can watch is Bader Field. Um, Bader Field has parking. You can drive in and it is $10 to park and you can watch from there. Yeah, just about a mile away over in Bader Field. Uh, people gathered there, as we said, people gathered on the beach. People just curious to see this happen, to see an implosion come down uh, here in Atlantic City. We witnessed a, a bit of a, a, a banquet, as we said, coming in here. There's some VIP seats set up from our media perch over here. Of course, we're above uh, or on the top level of the pier at Caesars, uh, right across from Caesars in Atlantic City, Trump Plaza, right next door, Boardwalk Hall, next to that on the south end. Uh, so, yeah, there is some excitement. There is some fanfare. There's people just curious to see what it's going to look like when this building comes down. Uh, of course, with a building coming down, uh, that's going to cause some issues in the city getting around. Mm -hmm. Of course, streets are going to be blocked off just for safety so that people aren't around when this building comes down. A section of the beach and boardwalk from Georgia to Mississippi Avenues is closed off for the implosion. There are also isolation zones where people, where people will have to stay indoors. No vehicles or pedestrian traffic is allowed from Georgia Avenue to Arkansas Avenues, but not including Atlantic Avenue. And well, let's get into how the implosion works. Uh, engineering, it's just a hobby of mine, but I'll do my best to try to explain it to you <laughs> because it's uh, the main port of the building is gonna basically collapse upon it. Yeah, when we're, when we're looking at this building, I mean, you can see it there. It's right in the middle of the city. Um, you know, there is, Boardwalk Hall right next to it, Caesars right next to it. Um, a lot of damage could be done if this is not done properly. However, with an implosion like this, basically explosives get put in the foundation so that when they explode, the building collapses in on itself. Um, and that is just to, you know, make sure that we're not getting any debris going off. Like Brian said, some people are being asked to stay inside during this. They have closed off swaths of the street swaths of the beach, swaths of the boardwalk. Um, and, you know, we, we're looking forward to seeing how it's going to go down. But 
definitely there have been a lot of safety precautions uh, for this. Yep, those, that's right. The explosives are put onto the bottom level so that the building falls upon itself. The blueprints needed, of course, to be consulted. They are checked, double checked, mm -hmm. triple checked. Uh, the right explosives need to be used. Of course, the city needs to be consulted on how this happens. As Rebecca said, if you look on the boardwalk, well, of course, the, the area immediately in front of the former Trump Plaza, completely empty. There's boards up out front of the casino where it used to be. You look down onto the beach, there's quite a crowd gathered, really. Uh, it was a slow trickle at first. Quite a lot of people out there now. They kind of have the temporary orange snow fencing, I guess you would call it, out there. People are lined up against that, as we said, out at Basin Field. There's people that are paying $10 to park in order to watch this. Different casinos uh, selling packages in order to watch this. Mm -hmm. So, yes, there's just a lot of excitement. Quite, quite the fanfare, quite the event. And I think a big question going forward is what is going to replace it? You know, Carl Icahn is uh, consulting with Mayor Small. There is no news yet on what it's going to be. There have been some reports, some rumors that uh, it could become a park, a, a greenscape. I know the Atlantic City uh, space has a really wonderful art scene. So we could be talking uh, beautiful artworks and murals and, and sculptures in there. Um, maybe they'll build another casino, which would obviously bring a lot of exciting jobs and uh, new restaurants, club scenes here. So, I mean, the sky's the limit as to what that property could become. And again, when Mayor Small was out here probably about an hour ago talking with some of the media set up here, and by the way, there's a ton of media mm -hmm. set up out here. He said this is a good day for Atlantic City. Uh, you know, there's a couple different ways you can look at this. If you want to do the, the glass half empty look, you could say it's another casino coming down after it closed. But uh, of course, Mayor Small is taking the glass half full approach, saying this is the beginning of, of a new era. This is the beginning of a new development opportunity for what is really prime real estate right here on the boardwalk in Atlantic City. It's really the first building front and center when you come down off of the expressway for all those tourists coming into town. As we said, it's immediately next door to the historic boardwalk hall. It's a great space. It, it, it's a great uh, real estate opportunity for Carl Icahn, whatever it really he decides is. to put there and develop there. And as we said before, too, Mayor Small, it's a safety hazard for, for why this building needs to come down. He, he was, mm -hmm. he was uh, he's, of course, a Democrat uh, mayor here in the city, and he said it's nothing political. It's, it's a safety hazard. He wants the building to come down so that the, the opportunity to build something new can finally begin. Yeah, and I've been speaking to, you know, some people around here, and, you know, this is a casino that employed people for years, you know. Um, people have memories here, so... As much as it's a, an exciting day uh, because this this building has laid empty for a long time and now it, it's it's possibly going to be remade into something really exciting, it's also a little bittersweet for the people who celebrated birthdays there, celebrated their engagements there. Um, yeah, so we're, we're really excited about that. Yeah, absolutely. And we'd again like to thank you for watching along here with our live broadcast. Ryan Ross and Rebecca King with the USA Today Network in Atlantic City, New Jersey. We're nearing that 9 a.m. time for the demolition. We'll give or take maybe a minute or two. Who yeah. Knows. Uh, Mayor Smalley was out here before and said, good timing. If this was scheduled to happen yesterday, it wouldn't have happened yesterday because of the fog and some of the weather conditions here mm -hmm. in Atlantic City. Uh, so he was out here today saying, you know, it's coming down at some point today, maybe 901, 902. We'll see. But uh, we're really just a couple minutes away. Our thanks, of course, to all of our photographers stationed around the city, bringing you those great drone shots as well. Uh, mm -hmm. We're just about ready here. Um, the crowd's assembling. We have our the VIP seats out here on the pier at Caesars. Uh, they've taken a seat. Looks like they're ready. Uh, again, the crowd down on the beach, too. Continuing to build some last-minute people showing up, getting ready to watch this implosion. Yep. It's really just a spectacle of all. People look I imagine Bader cool. Field is full. Yeah. Um, you know, And like we said, there. There are big parts of the boardwalk and beach that have been closed off. So you can't get too close because obviously safety reasons. We think we have a pretty good shot here. We've got a pretty good view of what's going to happen. And this is an implosion. So what you're going to be expecting is the building to collapse in on itself. Um, and, you know, yeah, we have people who worked here. We have people who worked here. We had people who, you know, yes, we had people who worked here. We had people who you know, celebrated so many things. So this is this is really a bittersweet day for them. And, uh, you know, this is, I, I'm hoping with COVID, obviously, we had Atlantic City basically shut down because casinos are just topics for everything that was not great uh, with, with COVID. So, uh, you know, casino floors were shut down, restaurants, clubs, all of those places, which would be super spreader areas, 
had to be shut down. So that was a real hiccup in Atlantic City's history. And again, in 2018, there was just so much energy coming into the city. Um, I was here when Hard Rock and uh, the Ocean Casino opened and there were celebrities here, you know, politicians, everybody was just so excited to see these brand new spaces. And with that always comes amazing new restaurants. We have some of, you know, the top chefs, Iron Chefs, Food Network celebrities own restaurants here in Atlantic City. So anytime a, a new restaurant opens, we're talking about a ton of new jobs and new restaurants, new clubs, exciting things to check out. So in 2018, again, there was a lot of that energy and Atlantic City seemed like it was on the up and up. The Noise Arts Museum, which has an amazing African-American history museum, uh, was getting some attention. Whoopi Goldberg gave it a shout out on The View. So again, I, I, I can't emphasize how exciting that year felt. And then obviously 2020 hit and that, there we go, there's my band. Um, 2020 hit and it just kind of all fell apart for Atlantic City. So I'm hoping that this ushers in a new era because again, this is a, a town that employs a lot of people. It is a very vital town and it's full of history. I mean, there are so many, so many stories of Frank Sinatra here and all of these amazing jazz performers. And, uh, we are one minute away. We just got the announcement. Yep, that's, this, that's going through the crowd out here. So we're about one minute away. So Rebecca and I are going to get out of the way. Yep. We're going to let you watch this implosion. When we come back, once it's down, well, we'll wrap things up. But again, we're about one minute away. So we'll get out of your way.
Okay, as ash showers down on us from the explosion, um, we want to thank everybody behind the scenes for helping us out. We want to thank everybody at home who watched, and uh, thank you so much for tuning in uh, to the USA Today Network. I'm Rebecca King. I'm Ryan Ross. We're going to go scrape the dust off of us. Thank you for watching at home, and we'll see you next time.